Hey, it's your girl, Koi, and welcome back to Mel and Then Talks Podcast. Here on this podcast, we get into the real tea, okay? We talk about everything from a woman's perspective. Nothing is off limits, okay? We might laugh on here. We might cry on here. We might even rant a little bit, but hey, that is okay. We are women, and that's what we do. So let's get into the show. This is Mel and Then Talks Podcast. Hey, 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 what's up, y'all? So I am back with a bonus clip, you guys. Um, I was on the Wisdom app. Some of you may know that I have became a brand ambassador over there for the app, um, and we are making waves. We have a community over there that we're building. The app is strictly for mentorship. You can go over there, have general conversations, topics, debates, and just get a feel of new people. Um, I use the app for topic conversations, and what I'm fin to play for you guys, what I want you to hear is just a general conversation that I was having over there is still from me just being in my head and realizing that I am a part of a fake family. I come from a family that's not very supportive. They support who they want and and that's just pretty much it. They're just fake as fuck. And it took me a minute to realize that. So I thought I'll hop on the app and have a conversation about that. And as you guys listen, the conversation changes into a guy named Ricky. He is also a podcaster and he was interviewing me. So he pretty much gave me a like an idea, a general idea of what podcasting is. How can I interview and be interviewed? And it was a very good topic. So you guys will hear some things about me that I've been wanting to tell you guys I want to dive into, but didn't know how to formulate that into a show. So here is a clip, and I hope you guys enjoy. I come from a fake ass family. Like, I ain't even gonna hold. It really took me 31 years to really, to really notice how fucking fake my family is. Like, fake and phony. They support who they want to support, they talk about who they want to talk about. They make up stories about the person if it don't fit their their narrative, their logic of what the individual really is. They sit and kiki about the person. Then when the person comes around, they in their face, chatting it up, mumbling and cackling like they wasn't just talking about the person. Like, my family is really motherfucking fake fake as hell (laughs) i thought my dad's side of the family was fake and phony like for real i ain't gonna hold y'all like like i really thought my dad's family was fake no my mom's side of the family was fake like from from my uncles on down to I guess you just thought said my uncles, because my aunties really ain't fake, but I got a lot of fake-ass uncles and a lot of fake-ass siblings. Yeah, and it's like, I don't fuck with nobody for a reason. Everybody's motherfucking fake. Like, it really took me 31 years to really notice how fucking fake my family is, and that's crazy. I don't know why it took me that long. I really wanna know. Like, I'm the type of person that, hey, I don't know. I'm the type of person that just doesn't really. I'm not really family oriented. I guess I don't know. Hey, what's going on? Um, hey, how's it going? We're chilling. How are you? Ah, not bad. I heard real talk, so I had to come on in and bless the mic. <laughs> so you got fake family too? Yes. Uh, friends, family, you name it. And it took me, I'm 41, it took me up until last year to really realize that you, you got to let them go, unfortunately. It doesn't matter if it's friends, family, loved ones. 
you know, we, we keep holding on to these people because we think they're blood or whatever, and we're disturbing our peace, right? We're the ones that are, you know, uh, think we can be saviors to everybody or keep dealing with all the shady stuff. And so I finally mm-hmm. realized I had to cut everybody off. If you weren't adding to my peace, if you were shady talking shit, only using me for whatever you thought you could get, I just cut you off. Yeah, I'm kind of at that point now. And it's like, why did it take me so long to figure this shit out? Like, I've been seeing it, but now that I'm older and I'm really at that point to where uh, I can actually I speak out without being second. disrespectful. Go yeah, ahead. If you really take a second to really think about it, I think you, you'll know the answer because we all know the answer. We just don't want to be honest with ourselves and why it took us so long. We know why it took us so long, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think I know why, but, you know, you come to that point where, like, you want to start speaking out, but our parents so old school, you're disrespectful, you're rude for just speaking on your emotion. Well, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, right? I'm I'm very blunt. If parents, if they can't respect your opinion, then they, too, almost got to go. Not in that sense where, you know, as long as, obviously, you don't live under their roof and things are different. But if you're independent, you have your own place, you should feel like, you know, you you should be able to tell them what it is and what it's not. And they should be able to respect you on that, you know? Yeah, 100%. You know, and if they're not, if, you know, you can't wait till the end of the year to cut people off. You just got to. The same day, goddamn it! You know what? These 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 three people on my on my phone list—they they've been disturbing my peace. I just need to cut them off. Mm, Boom! Instant. I'm down to seventy-seven contacts. I have been cutting people off left to right. Like you don't serve a purpose. You gotta go. That's crazy. I don't know. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> people is fake, and I'm just over this shit. It's like I. Like, I'm really finna start speaking, calling this shit out. At this point, I'm calling from the mama down to the grandma. <laughs> Are you Caribbean descent? No. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. No. So, what's your lifestyle now? Do you live by yourself? Do you have kids? Or what is the that dynamic? Oh, yeah. I live alone. I have a child. Been on my own since I was, like, 17. Left the nest, never went back. So, you know what I'm saying? Not much that a person can tell me because I've been on my own raising myself. Gotcha. That's awesome. And do you raise your child by yourself? Do you guys co-parent? Or what is that dynamic? How is that like? Be co-parent. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to hear that because a lot of people are uh, unable to do that. So I'm, I'm happy to hear you guys are able to find a way. Yeah, most definitely. It's not about the person, it's about the child, so it's easy. That's awesome. Not a lot of people um, are able to, to understand that concept. Like, bro, we didn't work. Doesn't matter if it was a one night stand or we've known each other for five years. Like, you know, if we want to do this and for the child, let's just figure it out. And that takes like real mature audience to, to, to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Most people don't understand my decision. Like, I decided to be a single parent from the jump. So, most people think I'm crazy for just taking that leap right off bat. But, you know. Why do you think that is? Why Why did you want to be a single parent from the jump? Because I don't really have, like, a real answer. But I think it's just because I knew what the situation was going in. And, you know, so I never really... So what was to the, the guy like that? Was it just you knew it was just gonna be like just fun, or how, how did you get pregnant? Okay, so we gonna we gonna we gonna talk we gonna talk for real. All right, so it was a fun night. Like it was my best friend. We had a fun night. One thing led to another. Boom! I found that I was pregnant. But dude, he had a crush on me. But you know, I didn't want to make our friendship awkward, even though it already got to that point. Gotcha. So I was just like, hey, we can co-parent, we can remain friends, but we're not going to be a unit. We're not going to be together. Gotcha. Okay. And how old is your little one now? He's six. Oh, so this happened like, like, damn. Okay. So you was what, like 25, 24 when you got, when y'all decided to go down? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Okay. 
Damn. Uh, see, it, people don't need to understand that you can't get pregnant on the first night if you ain't you pulling out or using the condom. God That's damn. a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> Even like, nah, bro, we can't get pregnant if we do it one time. Oh shit, bro. Yeah, like I knew what it was though. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not into that. I knew what it was, but me just making a conscious decision, like, yeah, we not gonna do this. We can, but we can raise our child and be cool. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. I'm happy that you was able to, you know, say fuck it. We can't be together, but we are gonna raise this kid. I'm happy to hear that at least. Yeah, I think like it's easier that way if you're just honest about your feelings right offhand. I feel like yeah. co-parenting is easier than just reacting off emotion. Well, you know, we we emotional and men as well are emotional as well, which which is which is crazy. You would think that female traits but we can be emotional too especially if we're really feeling you and and you know we think the babe is gonna you know hook us you know being stuck together and people as you can see like it doesn't matter if you get pregnant if somebody don't want you like that that's what's gonna happen and then now you've created this this child and you know yeah like females dip off too like people don't see that they think the men always run off but females run off too <laughs> i'm one of them i ran off you're I'm, one cool. of them. You're <laughs> like, I'm good man i'm good homie <laughs> so that so this was literally a one-time thing or did y'all hung out a few times we had a friendship we were best friends and we just you. we just took it too far like just exploring no, I know. So was it like a one night explore? Yeah, it, it was a explore? one night explore. One night explore. One night explore. <laughs> so let me ask you this. So so you find out you're pregnant a few weeks later. Like how come you didn't like a board or whatever? Why do you think I don't you, believe you in kept that. it? I don't okay. believe in that. I feel I like I'm you. grown up to lay down and, you know, do the deed. I should be grown up to, you know, own up to that face it and have it i don't believe in the whole abortion thing i don't i don't think that's right so how did he feel about it did he want you to have the baby was he excited or like what how, he how was excited go? but he was more concerned of like if i should keep just because of our friendship he was more so scared he didn't know what was going to happen i got you okay so you drop the news, you're like, yo, we having a baby one way or another. And just <laughs> let you know I'm not asking your permission. <laughs> you know? Yeah, pretty much like this is happening, but hey, by all means. Yeah. So did you put him on you top in the picture, buddy? Or he was open to just do he just Absolutely does what he's not. He does what he's supposed to do. We don't believe in child support. I don't believe in none of that. I do not believe in tying the black man up to the system at all. Don't do that. That is very, it's kind of weird putting the black men on the system. I don't believe in that. But yeah, back to the fake family. We on the topic was fake family. That was Ricky. Sorry. It was a great conversation. I'm back. I'm back. I was listening. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, that's one of the things about, like, when you do some of these live, you'll start off one topic and then it'll spin out because it gets so juicy. Because you're like, ooh, I kind of want to know the backstory. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm an open book. Like, I I like talking. I like getting things out there. No, of course. I mean, the more comfortable you are, the easier you get with life. That way, you know, you can't be judged. Like, think about... You know, like Cardi B, right? She's like, bro, like, I don't cook, I don't clean, but nigga, let me show you how I got this ring. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, like, when you can be that honest about who you are and who you're not, like, nobody can use anything against you. And that also applies to, you know, my family is fake, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, it shot him out. But, yeah. We was talking about fake family. Who got fake family? Who's coming up? They shot you out. I'm still using, getting new to this app. I don't even know how this works. I'm a new booty on here. It starts to get super juicy. Yeah, yeah. Once it starts (laughs) to get juicy, the time goes by quick, quick. You know what I'm saying? Or it could be like 
you could be dreading, you're like, damn, this dude is, or this person you have as a guest is whack and you want to kick him out, but you don't know how, you don't want to be rude, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. This is my first time actually doing this. I don't really know how to work this. Oh, okay. Well, welcome. I, I actually just started doing this a couple of months ago and you'll learn pretty quick. You can ask the audience, the people who definitely kind of guide you. Um, obviously, you learn how to increase the timer on here. So, you know, you can have like 30 minutes, an hour, or two, three minutes. So I think mm -hmm. that's the component like a lot of people need to master. Like if you're going to have really great, juicy topics, expect it to be just what we're doing, like going back and forth, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then go from there. So cool, cool, cool. Well, I, like I said, I, I just, you know, I like the topic. I like your honesty and I just wanted to. Like I say, bless your platform, and, and that's what my platform is about. I'm always trying to support other people, especially if they're new, because you can't ask for support and not give it. Right. So do you so, run, like, a um, a podcast or something? What do you do? Yeah, I do the, I do the same thing on here. I My topics, uh, my background is, you know, I'm a comedian, like, stand-up comedian, and then I also... I use laughter. I, I use stories to kind of cheer people up. I mean, you know, we with everything that's going on this day and age, I'm always trying to like, you know, put a smile on people's face through comedy. So, you mm -hmm. know, so there's nights I'll, I'll do some comedy stuff. I'll use some like relationship stories or I'll talk about um, should women pay 50 50 in relationships. So I try to talk about real life stuff that applies oh, to both sides of the house. And you like so, to drive controversy with those conversations. I, I do, I do. Listen, I, I be getting a lot of backdoor text like you wrong for that, Ricky. I'm like, listen. Like, but I mean, I think age, women should play fifty fifty. Okay, I feel like it depends on what we doing and who and asking. But I do feel like women should put out sometimes. I agree. So that's the thing in this new, like, you know, in this new generation, like women are like straight up, you know, you take me shopping design, I give you coochie It's very transactional. They don't even want to go out on a date, dinner or drinks. They're like, yo, I, I want that designer bag, take me to the store and I'll give you them cheeks. And I'm like, yo, that's you straight process, straight prostitution, bro. And mm -hmm. so then guys get so accustomed. To women like you want to take me out you got to spend money you got to take me out to a nice date and they'll suggest like oh i haven't been to capital grill so let's take me there that makes let's get a bottle of champagne let's get some steak and all they're trying to do is get experiences from dudes and yes. then they don't even give the dudes no cheeks dude just spent four or five hundred dollars bro on taking you out to a nice you know restaurant and then you're like i'll think about calling you back but if we do that to y'all it's a problem you feel me <laughs> you know, and so you see, you feel me? So that's the shit I talk about on my platform, shit like that, you know, and or I'll bring somebody on. I'm like, yo, we're going to talk about your body count. <laughs> and they're like, what? Like, yo, we're going to play hot seat tonight. You know what I'm saying? You I know, love if hot you, seat. Yeah, it if you a ain't scared, it, uh, <laughs> it gets super juicy, like super duper juicy. I remember I was talking to this woman on there and she's a mental health advocate and everything else. And I remember asking a question like, would you ever date or have you ever dated a, a you know, somebody who was an escort? And she's like, man, I'm going to have to be honest with you. She's like, I did. I dated this guy who he was a gigolo and he did some escorting, whatever. He had some clients and she was OK with it. She's like, I just got divorced. I was in my whole phase. She was like, I, I was fucking like five. Three she was having dudes. fun. That's what that yeah, was. Yeah, she was getting that deep. So I was <laughs> like, so those, that's, see, that's what I'm talking about. I get like real deep. Like, I'm like, I want to know the detail. Let's talk about it. You know what I'm saying? I don't think <laughs> talk I ever about dated your whole escorts. Phase, you know? they, got me, they, they got me thinking now. I don't think I ever dated one. Um, well, nope, I'm lying. I'm lying. lying. I'm lying. I never dated one, but I know a guy. Who's a jiggle? I kind of like, he gave me like pimp vibes. Like he had different <laughs> cheeks that he used. You don't get money for transactions, but he said that he wasn't. A, I forgot the word he used. He's real slick with the words. He yeah. said he's not a pimp. He's a, um, what was it? I can't remember. It's like a companionator, some shit, something like that. <laughs> 
He's real it, smooth. Yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, there's, 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 there's a market for everything. There's women out there looking for, like, there's women out here that are like, let's say, South Florida, right? They are mm-hmm. very honest. They're like, yo, listen. You can date, do your thing. I'm going to do my thing, but I want the benefits of the relationship. Like you take me shopping dinners and you come home to me and you do your thing. I do my thing. Like it's this new day and age of dating is everything is situationship now. It's nuts. I mean, yeah. You know? That's the new norm, I guess. I, I know. Like, so there's a lot of fake polys. There's a lot of. Definitely you know, a lot of that. People, like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to. No, bro. You just want to have a threesome. You and your girl want another chick to have a threesome with. Why don't you <laughs> I just say that? Like, <laughs> instead of being like, I want a third. I want a relationship. Or like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can't even keep it 100, bro. So people will say shit just to try to like manipulate the system of the game. You feel me? Yeah. So, so you agree that. You know, so would you be upset if a dude's like, nah, bro, you, you got to take me out. You got to get this bottle or, or you got to contribute to the steak dinner or wherever. You, you okay with that? I'm cool or with that, you? but it depends on the guy and if I'm feeling him or not. Because if I'm not, I'm not doing that. So he's got to pay if he wants to take you out. If he's trying to, like, convince you to, to fuck with him. Yeah. I got you. Do, but so I get vibes like if you coming off like you trying to woo me, but I gotta put out to get your attention. Like nigga, get out of here, you beat it. <laughs> like, so if a dude's like, yeah, listen, I think you're mad sexy. You know, I don't want to waste your time. I'm, I'm just trying to smash, and then if the vibe is right, then we can see what's good. Do you like that approach? No. So I mean, it's respected, what, what but. You? So what is what? What do you think in this day and age is the best approach that you think? that someone like you would would appreciate um like i like a guy that's you know that's smooth that can talk like you said real blunt real honest but i'm i'm hard to get through on though like really get through too i do exactly. a, a vibe the lying, they, they keep it yeah i there. see through the the bullshit like i'm real big on vibe if you can be okay. the smoothest talker ever but if i get a bad energy off of you it's a dub that's crazy and do you date like older dudes dudes around your age or like how do you, how do you see that <laughs> like what do you i'm 31 older? so i date i date a little bit older like what 50 55 what, what, that's what, pushing what, it that's pushing it that's right, pushing so. it about, about like 50 maybe <laughs> 50, 55 maybe. we getting up there to my daddy's age like that's oh, pushing it well like so you don't think 50 is sugar daddy like you know it is okay so then so you like having a sugar daddy i had a sugar daddy before when i was younger i haven't had one since i'm an adult oh okay and so how how was that transaction was it straight up sugar like he took you out shopping design and you had to give him coochie or what, what was the rules? It was a sugar gave? daddy without giving the sugar. I didn't have to do anything that what? I didn't have to do. Uh, oh, so did See, but this out? how I'm be real. This is how it happened. Like, we was cool. We met. He was a real cool dude at the time. You know, I was a little fast ass. I was a little fast girl. I didn't, I wasn't honest about my age or whatever, whatever. And then he, uh, were you I eventually told him. I was a minor. I wasn't 17 yet. I was 16. He was 32 wow. at the time. Yeah. And I initially told him my age. He was still cool with it. We wasn't had no sexual intercourse until I was of an age. I won't say that. And gotcha. it was like, he was, you know, I didn't really have to have sex to get what I wanted. Money, cars, or whatever it was I was wanting. I didn't really have to do too much. He just like me. Gotcha for you okay i got you but understood that you know you're younger you 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 can't you know you can't get those things and he don't he's able to and he likes your vibes and you was worth it yeah i got you now these new sugar daddies they trying to fuck and i'm not fucking (laughs) (laughs) i'm sorry i'm not Uh, so the the your sugar daddies are they just black or do you you open to anything when it's just about the game well, my sugar daddy at the time was black. I'm I I can't. I'm trying to get to the dating the little you know the white men's the black men's, the, you know the variety. I'm trying to get used to dating the variety, 
but they're black for right now. But I don't have no sugar daddies right now. I wish I did. I ain't gonna lie. I wish I did. I wish I had a sugar daddy. I but they're black. If you have, if you were able to get a sugar daddy right now, what would they be solving for you? What is it that you need? Uh, just a companion, somebody I can chill with, talk to, hang out with, do adult things. Okay. Adult activities. And obviously, he's got to, he's got to, he's got to pay you, you'll be rent or whatever. He's got to be putting no. out money. He ain't got to. If he choose to, it's, it's appreciated, but he don't have to. No. It's not you. a money thing with me. No. I got you. It's like picking somebody's friend who's only got experience. I'd say you think about opening up a business. Is that a third? They can guide you. Kind of like that mentorship, yeah. friendship type of thing. Yeah, okay. like if he wanted to invest in me, cool. But you know what I'm saying? It's not about the money with me. It was at that time when I was 17. Yeah, I wanted that bread. <laughs> and you said you you were putting out or you weren't putting out? I wasn't. Damn. But I was getting uh, bread. He was just giving it to bread. me. I he wasn't. Was I wasn't. <laughs> that that's crazy. And how did who who put you on become getting you an older sugar daddy? Was that like nobody your friends? How, how how do you wake up and be like I'm gonna find me a sugar daddy at seventeen, sixteen? Okay, so back then in like from where I'm from, from Kansas City, they had like these chat lines and stuff that we would call and talk to people, like party lines. Party lines, yeah, I remember those. Yeah, I we met him on a party line, and we just ah, talked gotcha. off of that, and we just click. Gotcha. Okay, I got you, and then it just okay. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. And so now, fast forward, you you in your early thirties, and you're like, shit, man, I kind of miss having me a little little sugar. Right, you're right. I miss it's having a little, little, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, take me out shopping here and there, just to you know, without me having to you know break bank. Like we could still be cool. Obviously, if I'm feeling you, I want to fuck you. I want to fuck you, but I don't mm, want to feel like that. Quiet. You know it's not quiet. Yeah. Required. But now you know in this new day and age, these ninjas, they're like, listen, like, I'm not paying if you ain't sucking a fucking, like, what you mean? like That's you know why I'm not a part of the game. I'm going to let them young girls do it. They got it. That's I'm going to stay in my lane. Well, that's, you know, that's what it is. It's the older dudes. Like, we ain't, we ain't dumb. We're not 17, 18, 19. Like, we know that we've been around the block. Y'all, y'all played us enough that we learned quick, quick. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I could yeah. spot a, a sugar daddy scammer out of nowhere. Oh yeah, tell me about that. What do you mean? Yeah, they got the same line. They're looking for somebody to spend time with. Their wife just passed. They got this amount of kids. They're lonely. Like that's the scammers. Oh yeah. So to what? To try to get you to take care of them, or to what is their end game? If that's the case. They be trying to get you to send them money. Oh, they trying to flip you. I got you. Yeah. Uh, or they get you the, 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 the pimp and hoe, you know, set up. Yeah, they, but they be on Twitter. They take you out and all that money and all that. And then once you are in love, they, 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 they flip you. Yeah, like, I was on Twitter one day and I was just bored. And me, I be just tweeting whatever. And I was like, I wish I had a sugar daddy. And then, like, not even me, a second of posting that that tweet, my DM is flooded with a whole bunch of scammer sugar daddies. Tell my DM me, I got you. <laughs> I'm like, no, sir. And so, they old, what, old. So what advice do you give dudes that to avoid girls like you for them not to get scammed? What qualifying questions do you think they need to ask? That chick that you know they are skip it, they're just trying to get that money and not put out. So what advice would you give like a brother, a son, or Wait, somebody? Say that again. You was going in and out. Say that again. I was saying, because you understand the game, right? What mm-hmm. advice would you give to like a brother, a nephew about women gold diggers, pretty much? What advice would you give them to recognize that they're, they're getting got? Ooh. What would I give my brother? My brothers? That's a good question because I never really thought about it. 
if they run into a gold digger because I'm beating bitches up about how my brothers, they ain't even getting a chance to get close to my brothers. But that's a good question. What advice would I give them? Hmm. Just to watch the bitch, watch how she moves, listen to her, her conversation, how she talks. Listen to what type of words she uses. It's all in her wordplay. You can always spot a bitch that's digging for money with her money. Like, type of words she uses. So talk to me about, because you said earlier, you know, the pimp will come out, try to be nice and flip you to, to, to get him money. Like, what advice would you then give your brother as well? Like, if she's real nice, she's coming out of pocket, like, treating him like a king. Like, how, when should he know she's, that? that he's, she's trying to lure you in with control. Like, to me, okay, that's like, I got younger brothers. They like older women. They mm-hmm. like going for the older women that got, you know, that's together, got money with the whoop. But those type of women, they want control. They're going to use their money for it. So you got to watch for that. Don't get too comfortable. I got you. And are they going after like white women? Or are they going any Both. shape of white, old, okay. black, Asian, and whoever's old. got bread and willing to spend money on them is yeah. going after. Yeah. I got you. Because in their mind, you know, she's an older girl. She probably ain't getting digged down. He a young lit nigga. You know what I'm saying? They trying to fuck the old bitch, get the bread and whoop the whoop. <laughs> See, look at that. Everyone, everyone's running games. To high. So. Do you think love still exists? You think that you could you absolutely. Could have fun? You do believe that. Love, okay. Love still exists. It's just it's hard to find out here because everybody's so fucked up in the mind with the internet and trying to find a bad bitch or a lit nigga. Like they going after the wrong shit. So what should they be going after? Should they be dating them, Steves? They're the good guys? Should y'all be dating the, the nice guys now or no? That- yes. Date the nice guys. Like the dudes that you was that was trying to holler at you in high school, those be the nice dudes that you overlook. They overlook mm-hmm. the nice guy, the corny dude. You know, the the sweet sh- the guy that's opening the doors. The bitches overlook him. So those so be the y'all, ones y'all that you can find that. real love with. That's what that's what so y'all want that now? You saying this day and age? Y'all, y'all like damn, I fucked up. Like I keep fucking with ninjas, but I actually would love a nice Steve who works a regular job. He's thoughtful, he's got great credit score. That's what they missed out on. Yeah. So you would do that? I still do that. Like I'm still cool with my little admirer. Like, yeah. <laughs> I never ever looked them type of guys. I was never the girl that really went for the popular guy or the dude that had the money. Like, that never excited me. I liked the the quiet guy, the dude that's off to himself. I wanted him. Gotcha. Okay. And what are you willing to do to protect when you get a good dude and chicks are trying to take your your, your good dude from you? Like, uh, are you willing to protect that at all costs? How do you feel about that? Somebody trying to steal you. Again. Well, I don't, I don't fight for niggas, but what's mine? I shouldn't have to really do too much because he's mine. So he's gonna tell the bitch to, you know, he's he's good off rip. There's not you. much for me to do. That's good that you allow him to handle that. That's good. Yeah. Like yeah, I be telling my dude like respect me in public as you would in private. Like don't do nothing that you know would embarrass me, and vice versa. That's crazy. So you feel like you you can actually be faithful, and not like you know. Say if you, you if you find a great dude who's willing to love you, give you everything you need, but he's a square dude. Mm-hmm. But you find a baller who's like, yo, I, I play for you know Kansas City. You know, this, you I know, would never I, go for it. You wouldn't go for it. For I wouldn't one go night for it. He'll give you mad bread. Just, just the one. I time. wouldn't this go for it because power. those type of guys come with restrictions and certain things like to get all that the the money and the lifestyle you got to go through certain stuff with that man i'm just not willing to do it wow well that's because that's because you 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 got a little bit of experience you you you, you've been down the rabbit hole and you learn you're giving up your soul control like it is it's a great form of uh, manipulation and yeah. women also, like we just talked about, do the same thing. If they got all the bread, they can control the dude with it. They got the money, they're buying the chains. You know, dude's not going nowhere because they're controlling mm-hmm. everything. 
And it's not even that I went through it. I seen it. Like, I sit back and I watch everything. I watch everyone that I'm around. Friends, I watch who they date, who they, they're interested in. I, I observe everything. So, if it don't sound right, it don't sound right. I'm not, I'm not going to rock with it. It's just not, but yeah. It's just not going to happen. I'm just not one of those females. It's not going to happen. So there is the clip, you guys. I really had a really good time talking to Ricky. He's really a real cool, laid-back guy. As you guys heard, he's older. He's 42. So he really gave me some real feedback, some real answers. Um... Even off the air, we had a conversation and he's really gave me some pointers on how I can improve my podcast, my content over here and on that platform. And I'm really looking forward to what's next, you guys. Um, I hope you enjoy what you heard. I hope you got to learn about me and my story just the, from the little bit that you got. I will be opening up a little bit more here on Melanin Talks podcast. But in the meantime, you guys share the podcast. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for supporting me. I'm seeing the love that you guys are giving me. And I am so, so, so grateful for you guys. Thank you, my Melanin beauties, my Melanin kings. Okay. I will see you guys later, all right? This is Melanin Talk Podcast. Don't forget to share the motherfucking podcast, okay? We are going up and ain't nobody stopping this shit.